Hello world, Noah here. Welcome to episode 4 of Java to Kotlin. In this episode we're going to talk about for loops and when statements. Now while loops and do while loops look the exact same in Kotlin as they do in Java, and the same goes for if, else, if, and else, but for loops look a little bit different and the when statement is a new, more powerful switch statement. So we're going to talk about those two things here. Now in uh, Java, you would write something like for int i equals zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus, and then you'd have your body and you know whatever the loop does, it does. But this is um, you know a lot of syntax here. It's a little bit um, ugly. And so Kotlin likes to make it look a lot nicer. And so the way you do it in Kotlin is you say for i in one dot dot 10, or I guess in the example it'd be zero dot dot 10, and you'd print um, I, or I'd say print ln I. Now if we run this, it's going to do almost what you would expect, but not quite, because it's going to print out 0 through 10, whereas the example here actually prints out 0 through 9, because the condition is I is less than 10. So this range uh, like this, 0 dot dot 10, includes both 0 and 10. If we don't want to include the extra value, there is a function that we can use. So zero, remember, is uh, is an integer literal. It's an integer value that we're writing here. But I can treat it as if it's a value type, and I can actually call um, functions on it, call methods on it. So I can use the until method, and I can put in another value. So in this case, I'm going to put in 10. And until works the same way um, as the range literal, um, uh, except that it doesn't include the value. So zero dot dot or zero until ten is the same thing as zero to nine. So you have two ways of writing it. Now this does look a little bit ugly, but Kotlin supports inline um, functions, and what you can do is, uh, or sorry, infix. And what you can do is you can replace this with an infix function call, and now it looks like this. So i in 0 until 10. So it almost looks like you're writing a sentence. If you read this out of 4i in 0 until 10, um, it almost looks like pseudocode, and uh, it actually makes a lot of sense, which is uh, a cool feature. So instead of saying 0 dot until, and then putting 10 in, quote, in uh, parentheses, you can just write 0 space until space 10, which is a nice feature. Um, so now if I run this, it's going to just print out 0 through 9, uh, it does not include 10, and this is the for loop behavior that you're used to. So you can use a range literal with the dot dot um, if you want to include both bounds, or you can use the until if you don't want to include the other bound. Now, how do you deal with uh, some of it? Let's say we want to uh, only print out even numbers. So what you would do is um, this value is going to give you a range, and the range class has a, a method called uh, step, and that controls how much you skip by each time. Step is also an infix function, so I can just write step, and in this case I'm going to write 2. So I in 0 until 10 step 2, if I run this, it's now going to do 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. So it's going from 0 until 10, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but the step is 2, so it's going to skip over all of the odd numbers and only do the even numbers like that. And if I want this to go uh, from the greater value to the lower value, um, basically if I had this, say, from 10 um, until 0, basically I wanted to count down well, this is not going to do anything because I'm starting at 10 and I'm counting up to 0. Um, but 0 is less than 10, so it's of course not going to run. So instead of using the until infix function, you use the down to uh, infix function. So now if I run it, it's going to act uh, how you want it to. Notice that it's going to include both 10 and 0. First of all, it's going to include 10 because I'm now starting it at 10 um, and not you know, starting it at 0 and going up but down to does include the uh, end value. So this is um, basically, you, there's no list um, literal, so you can't write, for example, 9 or like 10 dot dot 0 
um, you have to do 10 down to 0. Um, and this includes both bounds in down to, whereas until does not include the second bound and the range literal that dot dot does. And of course we know that step changes, um, you know, uh, how much it counts by each time. So if I were to rewrite this, it would say for int i equals 10, i is greater than or equal to 0, and then it would say i uh, minus equals 2. That's basically the Java equivalent of this Kotlin code. But if you look at the Kotlin code, you can still clearly understand exactly what's happening, but it's a lot cleaner. I'd say, first of all, it's more cleaner and, uh, sorry, more clean, and it's also easier to sort of understand what's going on. I is going through the values uh, in this range, which is 10 to 0, stepping by 2 each time. You can basically read this code out loud, and it makes perfect sense. Whereas if you said for int i equals 10, i is greater than or equal to 0, i minus equals 2, you have to actually think about it uh, in order to understand what's going on. So that's for loops, and that's really the only difference. You say for value in, and this also works, um, by the way. So if you say for, uh, for example, name in, uh, and you have some array like uh, like uh, Alice and Bob, whoops, and like Charlie or whatever, and then you're gonna print the name. It works the same way. This looks like an enhanced for loop, except you don't actually specify the type, of course, because we have type inference. Um, but basically, this should look familiar like an enhanced for loop, whereas the regular classic for loop doesn't actually exist in, in uh, Kotlin because this weird looking expression actually evaluates um, to be a, an int progression. Um, well, this, yeah, so an in progression, which is basically like a range. It explains going from one value to another, stepping by a certain amount, and that's um, an iterable value, just like an array is. Uh, that's getting a little bit technical, but basically, um, that's how for loops work. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at when statements. Uh, they're very similar uh, in the way that they look and sort of in the way that they act to switch statements in Java, However, switch statements are not very commonly used in Java. They're really more of a relic of C and C++. I personally don't like switch statements in Java, and I never use them. Um, and if you look at you know Java code that's greatly used and that's distributed online, you'll find not too many switch statements there. Uh, but the when statement is a very powerful tool in Kotlin, and that's what we're going to take a look at now. So let's make, uh, let's do a very simple example. I'm going to make a uh, value called letter grade, which is going to, I'm going to set it equal to A. And we're just going to make a very simple, um, you know, chunk of code. We're going to say if uh, letter grade is an A. Uh, and the other thing we'll do is we'll make a uh, val, which we'll call um, a GPA. No semicolon. And I need to specify the type, so I'm going to make it. Um, an int, or I'm going to call this score actually. So if the letter grade is equal to an A, then I'm going to say score is uh, is a four. Otherwise, if letter grade is a B, then I'm going to say whoops, score equals three. If uh, letter grade is a C, then I'm going to make the score be two. If the letter grade is a D, the score is going to be one. And otherwise, score is just going to be zero. Now, first of all, I just want to mention that this is valid because all of these possible paths will give score a value. If I got rid of this else statement, um, and uh, then I tried to like print out score, it would give me an error because there's a chance that score might not be initialized, right? But if I make sure that score gets initialized in all of these branches, then it will work just fine. And this is the exact same behavior as in Java, so that is uh, nothing new there. But this is some simple code, and this is how you would probably write it in Java unless you're using a switch statement. Uh, and we're basically assigning score based on the letter grade. So if it's an A, it's a 4, B is a 3, C is a 2, D is a 1, otherwise it's a 0. And I'm assuming here that letter grade is going to be an A, B, C, D, or F. <coughs> um, and we're just going to make that assumption. Maybe you would want some code to make sure that it is, but it's OK. Um, and then you know, at the end, I could just print out, uh, you know, I could say your score is, and I can use my interpolation like that 
to put the value of score in there. So in this case, it would say your score is four since letter grade is an A. But let's take a look at how to do this using a when statement because it's going to be um, quite a bit neater. So what we'll do is we'll say when letter grade, this looks like switch, but I'm using the word when instead. And then I'm going to go ahead and put each value. So for example, A, then I'm going to put um, an arrow. And in this case, I'm going to say score is equal to four. Now I could put this inside of curly braces like this if I had more than one line, but since I don't, I'm just not going to use curly braces. And the thing that you'll note is that there's no reason, there's no need uh, to use the break uh, keyword because uh, there is no fall through. So you'd be used to, you know, saying score equals four and then break, um, but you don't need to do that. In fact, you can't do it because there is no fall through with when statements. If you want fall through behavior, you'd have to just use regular if statements, if, 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 but most of the time you don't want that. So um, a when statement will work. Another thing that you can do that's nice is if you wanted to also support, for example, lowercase letters, you can use a comma. So you can do something like this. So a general use for fall through, or one of the most common uses for fall through in Java is when you want to support like an uppercase and a lowercase letter, but Kotlin just lets you use, um, you know, commas like that. And you can also do some things like you can um, say, uh, so for example, we could add a check. We could say, um, whoops, we could say not in array of uh, A, B, C, D, F, for example. And then I could print out um, invalid, for example. So I'm, I'm going to just leave this. I'm just going to put this in as an example. But basically, I'm saying when letter grade is not in this array, when it's not A, B, C, D, or F, then I could print invalid, um, for example. So you can use in, you can use not in. Um, and that's a nice way to check to see if it's in a set or not. And then finally, um, instead of default, we actually just use else. So else score equals zero. So just like that. So this looks pretty similar. And I'll, uh, I'll tab it over just so it kind of lines up. This looks very similar to a switch statement, except there's no case in front of everything that says when instead of switch. Um, and you can use commas like this instead of having to rely on fall through. But there is actually a... Um, a nicer feature because basically all these bodies look really similar four three two one zero right um, so what I could actually do is I could assign score I could say score equals this and then here I can actually just put the values four three two one zero and so what will happen now is score will actually be assigned based on this when statement so in the case of an uppercase or lowercase a, it's four. So the result is four, so therefore score will be assigned to four. So when you're setting a, a, a variable based on a when statement, these need to result. So I can't say something like, you know, if I say something like print ln four, it's going to give me an error because it's looking for an int and it found unit, which basically just means nothing. It, there was no return value. So you have to make sure that you give a return value um, right there. Now, of course, you could accomplish the same thing using you know, a map, because uh, this is basically a map. Um, but it's a nice feature, because in Java, you would have to write all these if statements, or you would have to create uh, a new hash map instance, and you'd have to add all the values in, and then call .get on it or whatever. But it's really clean here. You can just write this nice when statement that uh, clearly defines a mapping like this. A goes to 4, B is 3, so on and so forth. And then you have your default case, which is um, 0, and then score will get its value. So instead of having all of this clutter code, and then, of course, you'd have to have or letter grade is B, or uh, lowercase a, rather. And you'd have to do that for all of these conditions. You can have this nice one statement, and you can also basically pull out or lift, it's called lifting, you can lift the assignment. So instead of saying score equals four, score equals three, score equals two, so on and so forth, you can lift the assignment out of the one statement and you can assign based on the one statement, which is a nice feature. So that's all for this video. We looked at the uh, different syntax for for loops and we also looked at the new when statement, which is basically a super powered um, switch statement. So that's all for this video, of course. Um, 
Subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Uh, continue on through the series, and I will see you guys soon. Bye for now.